my thesis is about English medium of instruction as an EMI, um, as a strategic tool in the internationalization at home in the higher education. Um, so I'm from the Uni Federal University of Minas Gerais. And um, it's important to remember that this study was financed by the CAPS. And part of this study was also held as a visiting researcher, as a visiting PhD at the University of Glasgow. So to begin with, I would like to explain the general and specific objective of my project, which is general one is this research aims to explore how the internationalization process has taken place at UFMG, which is my university, our my, my research context in terms of EMI actions and propose a collaborative work with EMI teachers. So um, the specific objectives would be to map the EMI initiatives in the last five years in our institution, explore the teachers' practices under the EMI perspective, establish a collaborative work between EMI teachers and language specialists, providing a support to the content teachers and their students, and compile and analyze a specialized corpora according to two EMI courses to provide support to students. Well, research questions are, how and why is EMI being implemented at UFMG? What are the content lecturers needs in terms of supporting their students? What are the language teachers attitudes towards this collaboration with the language specialist? And, um, how can specialized corpora provide support for students? So the literature review at the driving forces of this project is, well, we already know that English is spoken by a quarter of world population and it's the language of communication technology and business. As we already know uh, and established by Dr. Galloway and Krukov, that English can be a tool for global mobility, a gatekeeper to knowledge and a prerequisite to um, successful careers. We also know that internationalization in higher education in Brazil is going to take um, two big aspects. One is the internationalization abroad, which the mobility programs and internationalization at home, which is our focus in uh, this research. Well, it's important to remember as well the definitions of EMI taken to this research, which is teaching a content through the medium of English. And um, it is widely known that EMI and internationalization are interwined. So um, EMI is a practice inside the internationalization of our higher education context. Okay. So um, to understand a little bit of our context, this is what I brought to us. A comparative study made in 2016 and 2017 slash 2019 from Paul Bai, we are able to understand that we contacted some um, higher education institutions. Then we have the answerings and the silver one, which is the one that I want to focus, are the ones that are offering EMI. Since 2016, we had a number of um, 45, and 2017, 2019, which is the latest numbers that I have, I will update as soon as Faubai releases a new report, which is probably going to be next month. We have um, the latest number is 66 institutions already offering um courses in EMI. And then we had a small number of six planning to offer. It's going to be interesting also to see with the new report if these numbers have changed drastically or not. But well, this is going to be for my final presentation. Well, thinking about that, what would be the benefits of EMI in Brazil? So according to Galloway, and we have adapted this for our context, we understand that the factors impacting EMI adoptions are going to be the first one, the increase in international students and recruitment of employees, language skills development, although we understand that EMI's objective is not to develop language, but it occurs to be like one of the side effects of it. Um, also, 
access to a wider range of materials because we already know that if students are in the post-graduation, they are going to be having contact with materials that are um, written in English. Um, it also demonstrates the student and, and teacher interest, the development of students and employee um, employability, because once the students are having more contact with English, they are going to be having the side effect of developing the language. Therefore, um, they are going to be having a better, um, more time and more contact with English, improving their English, therefore in, improving their um, employability and increase in institutional rankings. Well, um, however, we also have to state some EMI challenges, which um, we mapped as cultural, linguistics, structural, and um, identity, as Martinez has already told us in 2019. And the collabor collaborative work would be because we have lack of language support for students, lack of support for teachers to provide support for the students. So sometimes content teachers are not going to have enough linguistic support to plan their classes. So that was one of the reasons why we thought about the collaborative work. Um, it is important to do needs analysis of from the EMI context in order to understand this. And um, then we started thinking about establishing a relationship between EAP, which is um, English for Academic Purpose, and EMI. And um, also use corpus tools to identify high frequent vocabulary. That's um, how we provided the collaborative work between language teacher and content teacher. Therefore, we would be able to, after using the corpus, um, create discipline and general specific activities. Well, methodology of this research was mixed method, um, documentary analysis to understand how is UFMG implementing the um, EMI tools, case study because we worked with three different classrooms to understand how is the relation between the EMI and the classroom itself. Um, and the small specialized corporate that we used to provide the exercises for the students. Uh, it's important to highlight that for the um, language activities, we use the EngConc. Right. So what is this research context? The um, context, sorry. So first we had a class in the psychology course, um, which was the course designed for undergrad students. Um, who are transitioning from the academic to labor market. So our students that are more advanced in the um, undergraduation course. It's a 30 hours course and um, it was held in the pandemic. So we have some synchronous and asynchronous meetings. The second class was the dentistry one, which we worked with um, epidemiology of oral diseases in countries and organizations of different public um, health systems. This course was shorter, 15 hours, five weekly meetings um, that were um, asynchronous. And the final one was business administration course, which were focusing on um, helping students to learn how managers can create value and um, understanding about efficiency and delivery of goods and services. It was the longest course that we had, 45 hours. Um, sorry. 45 hours and 90 weekly synchronous meetings. Okay, so the data collection instruments for it were questionnaires, interviews, and classroom observation plus note taking. And some of the results that we have analyzed so far are, well, from the documentary analysis, since we had three different perspectives, from the documentary analysis, we understood that. Um, well, UFMG has been developing its internationalization slash using EMI by doing agreements with international universities. The um, FITE, which I call here, it's um, the um, courses that UFMG have held in English. 
they are um, not mandatory. So students will take them if they want. Um, and they are all taught in English or Spanish, if I'm not wrong. Summer school. We also have language proficiency programs that UFMG is um, using to incentivate students to improve their English. And we also have EMI teacher training courses. Well, other thing that we have um, understood from our documentary analysis the, is the overview of disciplines that are taught in English. So we have um, undergraduate courses, the um, training courses, from FITE, post-graduation course, and some short courses. And as you can see, I mean, 2019, 20, and 21, we don't have any short courses. We have to remember that it was from the pandemic time. Therefore, I don't have data from it. Well, the corpus compiled was um, from two courses, as I said, although I worked with three. We only compiled corpora for two of them, because those I'm going to say a little bit further, those were the ones that wanted to work with um, the English support later on. So the first one was um, from the dentistry course and the second one was from the um, management course. And we compiled the corpora, we generated the word list. And after that, we understood what were the most frequent words and work with um, discipline specific uh, vocabulary. So as it is explained in here. So to develop those um, activities, I used uh, Paris Paretes, um methodology. So first, after the corpus based, um, after the corpus compiled, First, we did the needs analysis of our students and teachers. The corporate compilation was done after that. Then we generated the frequency list. We selected the vocabulary. And after that, we developed the activities. I brought here some exercises that were based on our corpora for a business administration course. Um, we also have a speaking activity for them. And this is a more EAP course, right? That um, students would have to do um, a graph analysis. Well, uh, the final analysis that we have was about the teacher practices analysis under the EMI perspective. So according to Macaru's um, model, I don't know if you are familiar with, but I, I, I tried to uh, draw it a little bit for us. So Macaro has a, a model that implies some pedagogies like multilingual model, concurrent support model, ostrich model, preparatory year, and a selection model. For our context, things that we don't, we don't have like a mandatory use of English or EMI is also not, not of, uh, mandatory in our context, um, I analyzed by the classes that I had. So the three classes that I that I had my case study, what would be, uh, how would they fit into Macaro's model? So thinking about that, the preparatory year and the selection model, they don't apply to our context because, well, EMI is not mandatory and uh, there is no language proficiency test that is mandatory or required for the students to join the EMI classes. Therefore, um, we considered, and after analyzing everything, a multi uh, multilingual model, which is the business administration course in that we were able to use translanguaging practices. Then we had the dentistry class, which was the concurrent support model in which um, we developed a speaking group in parallel with the class. So the teacher was conducting the content and then I was conducting a speaking group with the students. And the final one, I categorized the psychology course as the ostrich model, considering that um, students didn't need any support because of the proficiency language. And um, it's, well, there was no other um, English requirement or demand from the professor. So 
no support was provided. That's, that's exactly why I call it ostrich model. So those are my references. And I think that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'd be glad to answer, perhaps. Thank you, Emma, for this very wonderful presentation. And now let's move to the Q&A session for you. And I see one comment from Alicia. Do you want to have your uh, comments for Emma? Thank you. Do you want me to, to ask in, in loud voice or? <laughs> I'm not very clear. But oh, you can, can ask. Um, I think we still have some time, so please feel free. <laughs> yeah, feel I, free. Uh, it's fine. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I very, well, thank you very much for your amazing presentation. It was so interesting to to knowing more about what is happening in Brazil and specifically at your university. Uh, I would like to know more about your EMI teaching training course. Uh, because as we also have a teacher training course uh, at University of Chile, it, it would be very interesting for us to to compare experiences and why not to share in experiences. Oh, absolutely. I think that it would be um, very nice to have your email as well, because that would be also interesting. My supervisor is also here and she is the one who is always um, behind and bringing some teacher training for our um, teachers, which is um, something amazing, actually. I've participated only in two, but this, it was, were, were there any other, like besides the one with Chris and uh, yeah, the, Lucas? The, uh, hi, everyone. I'm Daisy Dutra. Sorry, I'm using <laughs> Emma's link here, so my name does not appear. Uh, but thanks for your question, Lisha, it would be great to to uh, get more information from your experience as well. Um, yeah, we did, we had a training, um, two short courses for the teachers, which were online, and that's the ones that Emma participated due to the pandemics, it was online, but the year before, we had training both in language and also uh, short workshops. They were more like uh, monthly meetings uh, with the teachers um, in the, that were interested in MI. But then when we had the concise, uh, they were like 30, 30 hour courses um, during the pandemics. It was great because then we talked about methodology, uh, you know, the why what is involved in MI in terms of uh, policies, in terms of um, uh, expectations from the teachers from this is so many different aspects and uh, and there were professors from many different areas but uh, we could not have anything else last year so we had for two years um and then so we hope so it was 2000 2019 and, and then 20 and 21. And 21, yes. Yeah, but so it's not yet a policy that is constant, right? Which we hope it will be one day. <laughs> okay. Um, I see that Jose has also asked me something. Um, uh, hi, uh, nice to see you from USP. <laughs> uh yeah, well, actually, it was something that was um very difficult to be developing because um, we are, well, I faced three very different contexts. Like I said, in the ostrich model, for example, was a classroom that the students didn't need any kind of support. They had a very high level of English, so no kind of activities were needed. However, in the other two, uh, the well, if we go for the dentistry class, for example, they were having problems in speaking but not because they didn't know how to, but because they were ashamed of speaking in front of their teacher. So they wanted to feel a little bit more confident in order to you know, get into the classroom and, and present themselves and um, connect with their peers and so on, so on. So 
all I did was conduct a speaking group and make them feel more comfortable. And um, for the other class was um, funny. And I like saying funny because it was interesting because we had A1 students and we have C1 students in the same classroom. So developing activities for uh, this mix of student was extremely hard. So I chose to use um, activities that were more simple and, 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 and directly to vocabulary instead of, you know, working with something a little bit more complicated since we had big majority of the classroom as beginners. And uh, some, but that's what I said exactly, they belong to Macaro's mot mot uh, multilingual uh, model because we had to be using Portuguese more than we would like to. And um, because of that, I chose more simple questions of vocabulary. And um, yes, that was it. Thank you. I could be talking about my thesis here forever, but I think we have to be a little bit more concise um, because of time. But thanks for your question. Oh, I'm going to um, write my email here if you guys don't have it. So if you have anything, you can drop me a line and I'll be glad to reply. Any other questions? No? Jingwen? Mike? I'm just impressed by your presentation and thanks for um, everyone here uh, for showing up and raise questions uh, for Emma. I think we are approaching to the end. So yes, please uh, contact Emma, contact each other if you would like to share more about uh, EMI teacher education. And we will definitely want to invite experts to have a training workshop on our network. Just keep an eye on our website. Thank you for yeah. participating in this session. Thanks, Emma. Thank you so much, everyone. Go back to the